On this week's episode, I'm joined by former helicopter pilot and current airline pilot Ricardo Nunes. We discuss, amongst other things, what he appreciates about Portugal having such a stressful and time-consuming job, the most beautiful landing in the world, in his opinion, some scary places that he's landed before, flying all over the world, and Portugal from a bird's eye view, what Ricardo appreciates looking down on Portugal as he flies. For those of you listening, head over to our YouTube channel to watch this episode. And for those of you watching, click down below and subscribe. And now over to my conversation with Ricardo Nunes. Welcome back or welcome to another episode of Portugal The Simple Life. And I'm delighted to be joined by Ricardo Nunes. Ricardo, uh, hello. Thank you for joining us. How are you? All good. Thank you. You? I'm very well. I'm very well. Did I say the name correctly? The the, the surname? Yeah. I, I've never seen. I had. It's not. I don't see too many people with that surname, Nunj. Really? Uh, I guess I mean, it was quite common here in Portugal. So. Yeah. Okay. Well, in, in Spanish they would say Nunes, Nunes, but it's Nunes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, okay. Exactly. Exactly. Ricardo, why don't you start off telling us a little bit about you? Sure. So uh, I'm Ricardo. I'm from Lisbon. I'm 37 years old, and I'm an airline pilot. Okay. Okay. Amazing. So short and sweet, um, we're going to get into into your work. Um, tell us a little bit about um, uh, your your hometown, uh, where you grew up, what you love about it, what you want people to know about it. Uh, I know it's Lisbon, and everybody knows Lisbon these days. Uh, but tell us what you want us to know about about uh, your your town. Well, as you said, I'm from Lisbon, so I guess everyone already knows a lot about about my hometown, Lisbon, which is. Full of tourists every time now, um, and, and basically I grew up, grew up here. I went to school here, and what still surprised me surprised me most about my city is the mix of cultures that you can find here in Lisbon. So it's becoming a very international city. It's booming yeah. with people from everywhere. As we know, um, a lot of uh, foreigners now live here in Lisbon. So you have a lot of foreign communities here. So it 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 helps to build this very interesting mix of people and cultures and, and experiences here in, in the city. Um, and basically, I think that's the most most amazing thing about Lisbon right now. It, it's a melting pot of different cultures. Yeah, because yeah, I mean, you've you've kind of seen the change happen right in like the middle of your life um right yeah. in front of your eyes because it's it's really been over the last 10 years that this has changed so much yeah completely uh do you know the the holiday saint antonio which which is yeah. the Lisbon's main holiday in, in the summer basically the the city gets packed with people and i remember quite well like 20 years ago being there with a friend of mine and we were talking with each other and i was asking myself um, i don't understand why not a lot of guys come to Lisbon because this is a beautiful city and you can imagine how, how it is in June, that amazing yeah. sunset, that amazing light. And the funny thing is 15 years after that conversation, it's the other way around. It, it's now completely packed with people coming here to visit and to live. So it, it was a um, an amazing um, you know, evolution from, from that point where Lisbon was maybe uh, not that well known in the world to now, which is it's it's on the opposite side. Everyone knows Lisbon. Everyone comes here now. Yeah, I mean, uh, as you know, um, Ricardo, my 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 job is is in real estate, and we've yeah. got clients from from all over the world. And I mean, I guess one of the things that people often ask is how do the Portuguese feel about, you know, all these people coming from different parts of the world and making their home here? I mean, what do you think is the general feeling? Well, first of all, let me say that you are in a good industry in Portugal. So business (laughs) must be booming right now for you. Um, But I get that question a lot. Of course, I think there there has to be a balance between this. You you are Mm -hmm. watching a little bit of this gentrification in the the city, which is... Mm -hmm. Prices are really gone up uh, in the recent in recent times, mm-hmm. so a lot of the locals are moving outside of the city, and socially this is a big problem for for society, of course, because mm-hmm. um, I don't know if you know this, but I think it's around twenty to twenty five percent of 
the individuals who now live in central Lisbon are foreigners. So this is a tendency wow. that it's only going up in, in recent 25 percent. Yeah, around that. Wow. Uh, so that's a lot. So, of course, you have to find that balance between what you can manage to, to stay local and um, what you can, uh, I guess, sell to f foreigners. Because mm. it, what makes Lisbon Lisbon and what makes Portugal a little bit of Portugal, it's also the, the Portuguese people, of course. Yeah. So th this is a very hard balance to achieve, I think. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, do you, uh, yeah, I mean, I, th I suppose the fear is that that we lose some of our authenticness, our 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 tradition, our our authenticity is the word that I was looking for. Um, with with kind of that that influx of of foreigners coming in, right? Yeah, uh, the, I think that's one of the ma major questions here. But but of course, it's it's we are living in in global times. It's globalization, so it's quite normal. Uh, it, it's not necessarily a bad thing, of course. But uh, I think the the rhythm uh, that um, that it is happening right now might pose a challenge uh, socially, at least. Mm, yeah. um, I guess you know that better than me because in your business, I think you're watching this happen. You know, uh, every day in real yeah, time. I, yeah. I, I, I'm I'm out of I'm out of Lisbon, so I'm I'm uh, I'm on the Silver Coast, which which is still relatively it's still traditional and, and authentic and that's what a lot of our clients um like about coming here is that it hasn't sort of it hasn't got first of all it hasn't got overly expensive but it also hasn't changed too much you still have your normal yeah. tashkas and restaurants and cafes and, and that authentic culture that that people love that's the reason people come here in the first place so it's just a case of yeah i think like you said finding that balance where everybody feels welcome but we don't lose our identity for sure Interesting. Um, Ricardo, um, you flew you flew you flew helicopters as well. That's how I mean, how did you start getting into into what you're doing today? Yeah, so basically I always wanted to be a pilot. That was my childhood okay. dream uh, as a kid. Um and my, my grandparents were from this village um in, in the close to Castel Branco, which is a city in, yeah. in, 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 in the Bay Interior. In the interior of Portugal, and uh, it, it used to be, it still is actually a, a training ground for the air force. So I remember when I went there in December, growing up as a child, seeing all the F-16s and the A-7s flying nap of the earth there. So I think that had some impact on me for sure. Uh, and so when I reached the age, I applied for the air force, and I was lucky enough to get in. And I qualified as a helicopter pilot in the Air Force. So I flew helicopters, mainly search and rescue missions. Okay. And that's really rewarding. Amazing. Um, yeah, but, um, Castelo Branco, that whole area for, for flying, I would imagine, is quite quite good. It's very flat. Oh, well, you, you don't have some parts of it. Yeah. Up north, but of course, you don't have... Um, a lot of um, um, a lot of cities there, a lot of villages. So it's it's a good place to to fly military wise. That is, and and not too much wind. Well, it depends. Uh, yeah. It, yeah. it depends on the day. It depends on the conditions. You, you can have a little bit of wind there as well. Did you did you visit that area quite often as a as a as a child? No, yeah, I did. I still do. I still yeah. do. I still have family there, so I still go there quite often. Yeah. It's, it, I love I love that area. We we actually had um a lady on the podcast recently who who she she is responsible for bringing. I don't know if you know the Siri House of Dragons. Yeah, yeah, it was filmed in Monsanto. Exactly. Yeah. So she she brought it to the she's the producer that brought it all here, and and we spoke quite a lot about Monsanto. That castle is incredible. It's not too far from Castelo Branco, it's um, and that whole area is just beautiful. You have this amazing project called the uh, uh, Aldeia Historica de Portugal, historic exactly. village of Portugal. So you you have a lot of villages just like Monsanto over there, like Sortelha, Sortelha, uh, Bel Novo, uh, Trancoso, Belmonte. So yeah. a lot of, a lot of these villages are, are really really nice and beautiful places to be and to visit. Yeah, I, I visited there in in the summer. It was so hot, uh, oh, yeah. man. It was it was cooking. But what a great, I mean, the, the castles are just incredible. Um, the ones that you mentioned, you know, Belmont and and Idanya Nova, Sotelia was also amazing. 
Um, but Monsanto is is truly special. It's it's and, and it's the perfect place to to shoot a movie or to shoot House of Dragons, for example. If you go there and you feel like, you know, you don't you don't have to change anything. It's you can yeah, just well, villages as they are. Yeah, they don't have to change anything. Well, actually, they had to use the air force um, to to get all the equipment yeah. on top of the on top of the castle. Uh, it's quite. A, I think she mentioned something like three days just to get stuff up there, you know, uh, besides, and then apparently the actors were all complaining because they had to always climb up there every single day, which <laughs> is, uh, it's a climb. It's a climb. It is, it is, it is. But it, it's a good climb. It's worth, it's worth a visit. And the views are amazing. Yeah, it's incredible. Um, when you did the, 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 um, the, the search and rescue flights, was that all in Portugal um, that you, that you worked? Uh, yeah, mainly in Portugal. We basically flew out of uh, Montijo, which is an airbase south of Lisbon, and also in the in the islands, so Madeira and Açores. Uh, we did have uh, some. We did flew some missions outside of Portugal. I remember we flew some in, in Spanish waters and Moroccan waters as well. Okay, because they they asked for our our collaboration there because we we had a really good uh, helicopter. Um, but mainly the missions were flown in Portuguese waters. Okay, okay. So this was all mostly offshore. Yeah, mostly offshore. Okay, wow, it's challenging. Yeah, we yeah. have we have quite an we have quite an aggressive ocean. Yeah, the North Atlantic is really aggressive, and of course, when you do search and rescue, uh, you usually fly uh, when there's bad weather because that's when things happen, you know. Yeah. Uh, so usually, when you have those real missions, flying search and rescue. It meant that the weather was not that good, so you could could count on some stormy weather. Weather uh, the the waves will be bigger than usual, that kind of stuff. Yeah, maybe that's why Portuguese people are so calm because we have such a, an aggressive uh, ocean. Well, I never heard that before, but yeah, who knows? It's a good way to it's a good way to look at it. It's a good, good way yeah, to look at it. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I'm gonna remember that one. Yeah, yeah, Ricardo. How, and so then, how did I mean? How did you transition into into flying planes? Well, w when you start flying in the Air Force, you you learn flying planes first. Then okay. they they get you qualified in a in a sp uh, specific kind of, uh, of of aircraft. So that might be helicopters, transport, or fighter aircraft. But of course, you always start learning um, as a as a um, as a pilot in planes. But I flew helicopters and in the Air Force. And then when my contract expires, I basically left. I applied for an airline and I joined the the dark side, you know. So it, the civilian aviation. Well, it's not the dark side, you know. If somebody's got to do it. Somebody's got to do it. I know, I know. Um, and where all where, where all have you flown in uh, as an airline pilot? Um, I'm assuming the list is quite long, but um, but yeah. just where are some of the places. Well, uh, all over Europe, of course, North Africa as well, uh, all the Portuguese islands, um, North America, the United States East Coast, to Canada as well, and Northwest Brazil. Wow, okay. So you've been almost everywhere. Oh, no. The, uh, flying as a pilot, there's a lot more to know. Yeah, yeah. Um, have you, and um, I remember uh, landing for the first time in Portugal. I flew to... Uh, Funchal, yeah. that that back then was quite a scary, um, scary, scary right. runway, scary place yeah. to land. Uh, the wind is insane at that airport. Well, it's it's a special special airport, of course, because you you have the airport right beside the the, the mountains of the, of the island. So what happens is when you have northwesterly winds, when the wind comes from the north, you do have some turbulence when getting in, into the airport. So it. it it requires the pilots to be a little bit more attentive to the weather conditions. So it's a very challenging airport. And I can imagine that as a passenger, the, the ride is a little bit more bumpy than usual, for sure. It was quite scary because you, you all you're seeing, depending on which side you come in, um, uh, if you come in on the one, the one side, I don't know which, which side um, in terms of south, north, whatever, but I remember coming in and for most of as the planes coming down you, you still only see ocean yeah. ocean 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 and then all of a sudden the houses appear and you're flying in but like almost like in between the houses uh it was it was quite scary and, and what i hadn't flown a lot at that time 
Um, but yeah, I'll always remember, I always remember that uh landing in, in Funchal. That was yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um uh one of the things I wanted to ask you, Ricardo, um you, you know, with with so much um so many people coming to Portugal, so many visitors. And I think this is how we might have first started connecting. Um, was I saw a post that you that you that you posted on LinkedIn about the the traffic um coming into Lisbon Airport. Yeah. Um this has increased uh, dramatically. Um I don't, I don't know if you remember some of those figures. Well, I don't remember those figures exactly but i do know that the lisbon airport is is basically completely uh, full uh, um, we we are right now at the same levels as we we were at uh, 2019 so basically things are, are getting back to our normal not mm -hmm. getting back to normal but already normal uh, mm -hmm. regarding air traffic and of course the airport is you know it's it's overstretched in its capacity yeah, because they've been speaking for a while about a, a second, a second one, but no. this is not, this is still not happening. Yeah, uh, it isn't. Uh, you know, uh, it's a long story. Have, it's a long story. Yeah, it's a very long story. Unfortunately, it is. Ricardo, with with um with all of the flying that you've done and and traveling and 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 going to these different places, I mean, what are some of the things that you? When you travel, first of all, what are the, some of the things that you miss? Um, and, and you know, it's always nice when we, we go away, we, we realize we have certain things in our own our home country that are special. I mean, what are the, some of the things that you miss and, and some of the things that you appreciate about Portugal um, from your perspective? Well, when I'm traveling for work, uh, I don't stay um, a lot of time out of, out of Portugal um so i i don't think i i do have the time to miss anything specific you know because it's only one or two days outside outside of portugal uh one thing is for sure when you land back in lisbon when you've been outside that that's a magnificent approach you know that's uh, the most beautiful and the most rewarding approach you can do so you do get the feeling at least i do get the feeling as a pilot that i'm coming back home which is which is a uh, um, really strange because you, you've only been uh, away for two days or um, three days. Um, but I, if I had to answer that question, I would say I don't know. Probably the food, you know. Um, I know it sounds strange, but uh, we do eat healthy here in Portugal. I think you know, and especially when you fly to the United States or a place like that, it, it, you do miss a little bit of this kind of med Mediterranean kind of food, of course. So, um, but I don't, I don't feel you know, I don't miss anything in particular. Uh, if you're only one or two days, it, two it's days good. not it's not long enough. Outside. Yeah. Also, so air, airport food is not not the best. You know? Oh no, 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 <laughs> no, no. That's for sure. Yeah, yeah. I, 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 I always miss the coffee. I'm like, uh, it's the yeah. first thing. I mean, the coffee. Why the coffee? What's that? Yeah, why do you say the coffee? Why is that? I don't know. I mean, uh, look, I haven't been to other places where they where apparently the coffee is supposed to be good, like like Brazil or or yeah. or, or Italy, but. Um, Certainly, when I go to the UK, uh, to the Netherlands, to Belgium, sorry for our our friends listening. Um, the coffee's not good, man. It's not, <laughs> it's not good, and it's good here. It's it's amazing. But you know what? I I I'm Portuguese, so I was born here, so I'm used to the, our coffee since you know since I'm a kid. So um, I, I I cannot relate with that. Um, I cannot see that difference, you know, anymore. Um, because, of course, if you go to the United States, if you go to Canada, if you go to Germany or you know, any other place, they, they usually serve the coffee in a different way, you know. They don't serve like yeah. like we, we serve here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, But that's actually a very good point. The coffee, it's... it's And for us, coffee is, you know, it's quite important, you know. Uh, a little bit. A little bit. Yeah. It's very important. We drink a lot of coffee. Um, so, yeah, that's a very, very good and valid point, actually. Are you guys allowed to text while you fly? Because I have a I have a, a client, a pilot, and the guy texts me all the time while while he's flying. He's gonna kill me if he hears this, but uh that's that can't that can't be allowed, right? I mean you can't text and drive. Uh what about texting and flying? Yeah, we, we don't text while we're flying. Uh, some of our, our planes in our airline they do have Wi-Fi. 
So okay. passengers can connect to a Wi-Fi network and they can text while flying, but we don't do that, of course, when you we are in the cockpit, of course. That's a good safe answer, Ricardo. Yeah, that's a good one. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> to describe, I mean, you mentioned that 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 landing um coming into Lisbon and, and how how beautiful it is. And I've done it a number of times and it is it is special. But for someone that's not seen it um, or, or someone who's yet to see it, um, describe that. Just try to try, paint us a picture of what, it, what it's like when you're, when you're landing o- over the river and, and all of that. Um, try to paint us a picture there. So I think the best time of the day to land in Lisbon, it's probably in the morning with sunrise, the sun rising. So imagine that, you know, it can be 6.30, 7 a.m., something like that. You're coming from the sea uh, or you're turning over the sea back to Lisbon. You'll fly over the beaches uh, in the south of Lisbon, Costa de Caprica, uh, Fonte de Talha. The, the sun is rising in front of you. And then you see that magnificent river, which is the Tagus River and the bridge in front of you. And then you fly all over Lisbon, uh, all over Alcantara, Complete, Alvalade, to land on, on the runway. So you have this magnificent view uh, of the city, especially if you're flying as a passenger in the right seat of the plane with the sun rising, and which is just beautiful. Yeah. Okay. So if you're coming from the south, fly on the right. Yeah. Choose a seat on the right-hand side of the plane. And if you can choose a seat, uh, choose one on the right side, yeah. Exactly. If you can choose a seat, these days yeah. you can't choose your own seats. Um, Ricardo, uh, I have a, I have um, some clients there from the UK. Yeah. Um, they they bought a property with us here on the Silver Coast many years ago, but the story that that led them to this area was quite interesting. They had been down to the Algarve many times and and had um, and had um, looked there, and it, it it didn't feel quite right for them, and and then one of their flights back to the UK, they were flying up the coastline of, of Portugal. Um, and they flew over this, this area where, where I am today. And they saw from the, the window of the plane, they could see the Bay of San Martinho de Porto. They could see Abidos Lagoon. They could see Nazaré. And they were looking going, what is this place? And actually it was like fate. The pilot came on at that moment and said, I'm from this area um this and and started talking about the different places along the coastline uh, and from there they started searching and and the rest is history um but i mean you you get the you get a real bird's eye view of our country um whenever you fly i know you've got to concentrate sometimes but i mean it must be an incredible sight i mean what do you love about sort of looking down on on your country when you're flying what makes it so special what makes it unique it is. Uh, Portugal, it's a beautiful country. And I had the privilege when I was in the Air Force, I flew helicopters. So I was able to fly all over the country. So the mainland and the islands as well. And fly not as an airline pilot. When you fly as an airline pilot, you fly quite high, you know, mm-hmm. 39, 38,000 feet. I flew helicopters then. So I, I get, uh, I got that feeling flying at 500, 1,000 or 1,500 feet. And one of the most amazing things about Portugal, uh, it's the contrasts you have in the same country. So if you're flying down south, if you fly in Algarve, it's a, re- a really different place than from Alentejo. And then it's a really different place from the north of Portugal, you know. So you, you get this feeling that you have several countries compacted in just one. In just Portugal, you know, you have you have the mountains up north, then you have uh, Alentejo. It's quite plain. Um, Algarve, you mean flat? Flat. Sorry, in yeah, the Algarve, yeah. beaches are beautiful. Then, if you fly in the Azores and in in Madeira, it's mm. a completely different set as well. Um, and that's what actually attracts me the most. You know, it, it's it's in the same country. You do have really different places. When you can, where you can have different experiences, and and that's amazing. Have you ever flown over a place um, and thought, "Hey, I've never, I've never been there before. I need to go there just because of seeing it from that perspective." Yeah, yeah, sure. A lot of times. Yeah. Where, okay. When where was the last the last one that you can remember? Last one. Oh, that's a hard question. Uh, I can't remember the the, the last one, but. 
Um, I remember quite well when I was flying in the India Sush in the Air Force, uh, we used to spot these different lagoons in, in the different islands when, while flying helicopters. And I, I used to, to think to myself, whoa, I don't know this place. What is this place? And I went online searching for the place. And I and I managed to, well, next time I'm there at uh, São Miguel or São Jorge, the islands, I'm going to book myself a car and I'm going to go there. Um, because you get to find this amazing, cool spots that you never heard before. It, it's When you're flying an airline, it's much harder because you're flying really high up in the skies. Yeah, yeah don't have that detail um, but you can find those those places i remember i was flying once to accra in ghana in africa and usually we do a night flight there but this time was a was a day flight and we flew over what they call the eye of africa which is this amazing construction of, of mountains in, in the middle of the sahara desert and i've never heard of that and that's a huge construction a natural made construction and it, it was astonishing to see that from, from up in the air. And of course, I, I had to Google it and to find out what is that. I never heard of that. So incredible. Can you remember the, the, the lagoon that you that you're talking about in the source, which one it was? I don't remember the name of the lagoon. I remember that they uh, it was shaped after uh, a heart as well oh, okay uh, you can only go there by uh, walking there you can leave your car like one kilometer out something like that but i don't recall the name i'll get back okay. to you with that okay. one okay 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 amazing they've got i mean azores is incredible um yeah. i remember um i think it's called villa franca which is the um, that like volcano and you can take a ferry and spend the day yeah inside the old volcano and the water still in there and yeah. you're, sw you're swimming inside a volcano it's just uh, amazing it's an incredible it's an incredible place ricardo i mean um for you you know maybe um you've, you've traveled around you you've been exposed to lots of different nationalities and and cultures in your work uh probably flown with a couple of different uh, nationalities as well um what do you think makes makes Portugal um, unique? Um, what do you think makes Portugal different to to other places that you've that you've been? Uh, that's a very good question. You know, um, I think the the name of your podcast answers that question quite well. You know, the simple life. Mm -hmm. I think uh, we we do live a simple life here in Portugal. You know, things uh, you have the sense that things happen. Uh, a little bit slower than in other places you get to enjoy a little bit more of life you know and you when you have that time you do have the opportunity to do that because of course the weather is is really good compared to some other places you have um, the food is also good so you, you can get different experiences in the in the same country you can travel far north to the far south in in just five or six hours you know and i think that's what makes portugal so special it's it's a place where you can actually live a very simple life and be happy and you have a lot of experiences compacted into the same amount of space which isn't that much you know it's a small country but in that sense it's also a huge country you know with the amount of experiences you can have here yeah yeah, I mean, for you with with your work, because it is it's it's such a kind of a quite, very high pressure job, um, quite tiring, I would imagine, and exhausting. Yeah. And and you you when you're away, you you it's flat out for a couple. Of, you know, you get a bit of sleep, but you you got to be back at it and everything. I mean, yeah. that that concept of the simple life, that idea of the simple life. I mean, is that something that you really appreciate about when you come back home, and that you can just have that time to to slow down and to just enjoy the simple things. We mentioned the food, the coffee, um, but just the, the way the place feels. No, oh, definitely. Definitely. Especially when you live a stressful life, when you have a, a, a very demanding job, like, like being a pilot actually is, um, you manage to get some value out of those small things, you know? Um, sometimes the, the, the biggest pleasure you can have is just drink a coffee, read the book, enjoy the sun outside in, in the middle of the winter. 
and that that's something that uh, you know it's 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 priceless um but it's very easy to forget about that you know it's very easy for you and and for us to just you know don't realize that we are extremely lucky to live in, in this piece of land that we call portugal yeah we are lucky it's it's uh, it's a blessing um you think that's why everybody's coming the same yeah. thing yeah i i think it is you know i, I think of course it's it's um it's a lot of factors combined together, you know. Uh, of course, th there's this marketing effort uh, that was done in, in the last decade, of course, to show Portugal to the world. The weather is a, is, a, is a big factor. There's something which is one of the most strategic resources that we have in Portugal, which is the safety. We are one of the safest countries in the world. The last ranking ranked us at the sixth most safest country in the world um, and and then that, that of course it, it's something that again it's it's priceless you know you feel safe here and you can enjoy a lot of things and i think that's the biggest contribution for the fact that a lot of guys are coming here right now yeah the safety is a massive thing i mean even for for I, I, for you guys in your in your job i mean it must be a a, a relief flying back to a place like Portugal, knowing with relative comfort that, hey, this is safe. Nothing bad can happen uh, here and at this airport. Well, uh, <clears throat> I never had problems outside of Portugal, uh, to be honest. But uh, some places we fly to, of course, you have to be a little bit more careful than, than usual. Yeah. You know, you're, not, you're not in Europe. So there's there are some, some things that you actually have to be very attentive to. But otherwise, yeah. um, I, I actually don't have that feeling of coming back and feel safer while I'm coming back because I, I never felt unsafe outside of Portugal. Um, but it is it is, it is a privilege to go out at night and you can just walk home at 3 a.m. and you know it, it, it's 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 fine. And not, nothing's gonna happen. Yeah, Ricardo. I mean, um, we we. we sp you know, we've said a couple of times about everybody coming to to Portugal and yep. and the challenges that that brings. Um, you literally bring people, like yep. literally bring people to our country. Um, but I mean, what what makes you proud of 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 Portugal? What makes you proud of your country? <clears throat> you know, um, probably the Portuguese people. Um, I think we are quite friendly. We are very welcoming. Um, and especially when you travel a lot outside, that that that's one thing that you, you see the difference. You know, uh, you can really see the difference. And as a Portuguese, I, I can I can feel that difference when I travel outside, and and I can feel that uh, whoa, we do have a, a, an amazing people in Portugal. Mm -hmm. The Portuguese people are mm -hmm. amazingly welcoming to everyone. So that that makes me really proud. You know. Yeah, I mean, it's 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 funny because you you know, it's it's a strange thing when you when you when people will say things like, oh, you know, I'm proud of the weather. Well, that's not something that you can really be proud of because it's it's yeah. nobody's in control of that, you know. And it can change, you know. So yeah, yeah. yeah. But we we I mean, we can be proud of our food because that we make yeah. that, and it's and it's and the food is very much emblematic of of how we are as as a country. It's simple. Uh, it's comforting. It's yeah. all of those. It's 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 pretty pretty healthy as well. Um, but the people is the is the thing that makes this country. Um, I mean, describe that. I mean, what do you what is the difference that you feel when you go somewhere else? Um, can you can you put that into words? It's it, it's actually really hard to put that into words. But mm. I think you you get to feel that when when you see the way people treat you in in the simples of situations you know when when you go to a coffee shop or when you're walking in the street or when you're asking for directions or just the the simple things you know it, it doesn't mean that um, everyone is like that it, it isn't you know but i think it it's really different um here than in some other places you know and there's probably reasons for that you know if you go to any big city outside people are of course, more uh, stressed about their jobs, about their daily lives. So perhaps they don't have the time 
to just stop, breathe a little bit and, and help someone like, like I think we do here, you know, um, but I, I, I don't have a, you know, a, I don't have a final answer to that mm -hmm. question. You know, it, it, it's just gut feeling. It's something you feel. Yeah, it is. It is. Um, we had a, we had a, a guy on the podcast a, a while back in American. Um, we need to give Joao uh, Joao Blumel a shout out. Yeah. Your friend Joao. Joao's also been on the podcast. Uh, he oh, read my yeah. mind. He read my mind. Uh, he got me. He, he caught. He caught me. Yeah. He caught me. He he. He's really me. good. Yeah. No, it's, it's amazing. It's I, I I have an idea of how he did it, but I can't be sure. You know. Do, just, you know, uh, I know Joao since childhood as well. He was he was at the same school as I am, um, and okay. already then. He used to do this, the this tricks, and he just blew my mind. You know, it's kind of like, how, how does he do that? Yeah, we don't have an yeah. answer. It's yeah. yeah. I mean, I was I was uh, shocked. He he had little. Uh, you know, there was a, a few things in the room. He said, "I need to I need to pick something out." Um, and and the one that I chose, he had already guessed it. He had already written it on a paper, and he had already guessed yeah. that 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 was the one that I chose. Um, it was it was incredible. Um. But uh, yeah, so so for our, our foreigners that are listening, uh, here's proof. Um, we've got a pilot. He'll literally bring you to Portugal and he'll do it with a smile and, and welcome you along the way. Oh, well. but yeah, the, 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 yeah. the, the, the people are special. It's, it's something that when I go, um, ah, that's what I was trying to say, that we had another guest uh, on the podcast and he said um, um, being welcome is, is something that you feel. Or, yeah. or being included is something that you feel, and 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 he was um, an American guy, a, 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 a black guy who had obviously had issues and had had come into faced problems with racism and things in, in America, and, and he just didn't have those things when he came here, and um, it yeah. was a beautiful story, and and it is that I think it's my experience has been when I go to other places, the feeling is different, you know, would you when you come back home. It's just, yeah, you feel that warmth, you know, which which I think is special. Yeah, one hundred percent agree with you. Yeah, yeah, Ricardo. Um, what is one thing um that you want people to remember and take away from our conversation? Well, it can be this last part, perhaps, that we are very welcoming people and we like to welcome everybody. I think that's that's the most important thing that we've spoke about, uh, for sure. Um, and if you don't know Portugal, please come and visit. I think that's a, that that's what I would like. Awesome. Because my job as well, so that's a good thing. Awesome. Um, Ricardo, you post some really interesting things um, on online. Um, how can people how can people follow you um, and 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 see what you're what you're up to? Oh, well, uh, you can just follow me on LinkedIn. So just write my name, and I'm sure you can find me there. Okay, we'll drop a, a link in the in the show notes, and and people can can follow you. Um, and uh, yeah, you publish some really interesting articles and things like that. So so definitely, people should follow. Um, Ricardo, thank you so much. I've enjoyed this conversation a lot. Um, as you know, a question that we ask all of our guests, Portugal, the simple life, why? Because of the people, because of the rhythm, because of the food, because of the weather as well, and because it's a place where you, you can enjoy the small pleasures of life. Beautiful. Ricardo, thank you so much. Thank you. And I'm going to let you call it. That's a wrap. So thank you once again to Ricardo and thank you to all of you for listening. Please subscribe, share with your friends, give us a thumbs up and please leave a comment or a review. We always love to hear from you. Don't forget Portugal The Simple Life also has a magazine. So download it. It's for free. We'll be back next week with a brand new episode. And as we say in Portugal, um abraço. Welcome to The Simple Life.